To get powerful sound that isn't obnoxiously loud, you need to take three steps. First, EQ your room. Second, separate your instruments into different parts of the frequency spectrum. And third, apply compression to pretty much everything. Let me break these down. EQing your room is something I talk about often because it sets the stage for a great mix. Without it, you'll be fighting the same battle over and over again. EQing your room is putting EQ on your main mix so that your overall mix is shaped to fit your room. Each room has its own response to sound. It reverberates certain frequencies more than others. If you don't level the playing field, you'll end up with obnoxiously loud sound that isn't very powerful. It'll take time to EQ your room, but it's well worth it. First, you'll need to buy yourself a reference mic. I use the DBX RTA measurement microphone, grab it from Sweetwater, and support our channel in the process using the link in the description. You can't do this with just any mic. You have to have a reference or measurement mic because they're the only mic with a flat frequency response. You'll set this mic in the middle of your room facing toward the speakers at your level. Make sure the mic is tilted at the same angle as your speakers. Connect this mic to an open channel on your mixer. Activate phantom power. Make sure compression gating and EQ are all deactivated. Now you're gonna play pink noise through your sound system. Most mixers have a pink noise generator built in, but if not, you'll find pink noise on YouTube and you can play it that way. Turn up pink noise until it's about the loudness that you want at a worship service, and then set your gain for the reference mic so that it crosses over that point where the green meets the yellow lights. Head to the EQ screen for your reference mic and make sure RTA is active. And now you can see what your room sounds like. Look for those areas that are significantly louder than the rest and then apply EQ to your main mix, not the reference mic, but to your main mix to create a more even frequency response. So you'll apply EQ to the main mix and then return to your reference mic to see what difference it made. Back and forth and back and forth until you get things somewhat leveled out. There's no perfection here. There will be variation. You're only looking to solve issues that are way out of line. If you want more detail on EQing your room, get access to my course called Church Sound Made Simple. It contains a detailed walkthrough plus everything else you need for a great mix every time. Use the link in the description for lifetime access to Church Sound Made Simple. All right, let's talk about the next step. Separate your instruments into different parts of the frequency spectrum. You see, it's very common for instrumentalists to hang out in the same area of the frequency spectrum. They're all strumming and playing away and pretty much doing the same thing. And then you try to bring them all up so that you can hear each instrument and end up with obnoxiously loud sound. It's time to break up the party. We don't need instruments doing the same thing. We need them to complement each other. There is one trick you can do at the mixer to accomplish this, but most everything else will require you to communicate with the band and ask them to play something different. Let's start with what you can do. The acoustic guitar is an instrument that can stand on its own, occupying the full frequency spectrum. That's great when it's just the acoustic and a few vocals, but if there are other instruments, it's usually best to keep the acoustic guitar out of those lower frequencies. Thin it out so that you mainly just get the rhythmic sound from the acoustic and let your electric guitars and keyboards fill up everything else. Let me show you how. Add a low cut filter around 400 hertz, and then add a low shelving filter around 900 hertz and cut until it's as thin as you want it to be. Don't be afraid to be aggressive with this. Use your ears and do what sounds good with the rest of the band. So that's one thing you can do to separate your instruments into different parts of the frequency spectrum. And now you'll need to open up those lines of communication with the band. Simply tell them, hey, you guys are all playing in the same range. Sounding kind of the same out here. Can anyone break off into something different? Maybe a different octave or something. And then let them sort it out. If you're also a musician and have tips to give them, go for it. Otherwise, leave it in their hands as the musicians. Simply let them know something needs to change. All right, last step. Use compression on everything. All of your audio inputs have a dynamic range. This is the range between the quietest and the loudest moments, and compression lets you bring the two closer together, limiting the dynamic range. Now, without compression, you'll be fighting your sound being too quiet and then too loud, and you definitely don't have the perfect mix that fills the room without being too loud. So to help you get compression dialed in for each vocal and each instrument, I put together a compression cheat sheet. You can download it for free using the link in the description. Next, I'll move into the extended version of this video where you can watch and listen as I compress vocals, guitars, and drums. One of the best ways to learn is by watching somebody else do it. The extended version of this video is only for my Inner Circle subscribers. You can become one right now using the link in the description and get immediate access to the rest of this video.